Andreas Georgia here at CW Unplugged BT Studios and I'm with a man and that's not paint on your t-shirt by the way that is blood for the viewers watching at home Matt Inman absolute war out there against Chain Mills you come out you've got the stitches but you got the win are you happy with that yeah um, I'm happy I got the win I'm not so pleased with with the performance uh, there's a lot of things I wanted to do in the fight that, that I couldn't do because um, he caught an elbow early and uh, basically I lost vision um, so I was I was kind of fighting blind for a large portion of that fight but um, you know you sink under pressure you sink to the level of your training unfortunately my you know I, if there's one thing I can always rely on it's my ability in my jiu-jitsu and um, you know my work off my back and that, that paid off tonight for me fortunately yeah when you say you'd lost vision like are we talking about you couldn't see from your eye completely yeah well I think the, f the first cut uh, in the f early in the first round was if, I think if I remember it was an elbow above the eye but the blood immediately started trickling into the eye so I couldn't see from my right eye um, and then once I, I I'd gone on at my back, I think another cut opened at some point and then the blood drained into both my eyes and um, I, I don't know if you've ever felt but anyone who, who has with blood in their eyes will tell you it's just it's just kind of a red mist and it's, it's a blurriness and it's, it's really difficult to see so uh, I had to engage on the ground because I knew I'd, I'd be struggling on my feet. Yeah and obviously that's where the X Factor really came to play on the ground, you sunk in that deep triangle choke to submit him, kind of looked like you know you were potentially going to tap him in the first, he stuck out. All good. He made it into round two, though. Yeah, I, I hit some some submission attempts, some of the leg lock exchanges. I hit sequences, but I finished people with day in day out, and it, he was not for tapping. I was I was deep on a heel hook, deep on an inverted heel hook, deep on a knee bar, and deep on a straight foot lock, and he would not tap to any of them. Um, fortunately, I went to the, the trusty old uh, overhook wrist control triangle setup uh, on my wrong side, softened him up with some spike elbows, and. Uh, we got the tap that way, but there's always a way. <laughs> was that the experience age of him, you know, somehow surviving some way? Yeah, I, I had I had a feeling tonight that we were going to see, you know, the, the Shea Mills of old. I think he struggled a bit in, in the last couple of years, um, moving up in weight, uh, but now he's, he's back down at weight. He, he felt sharp and he felt ready, and, um, you know, he put the pressure on me, and I, I had to soak that up and ask myself if I wanted to be in there, and I, I really wanted that win more than anything, so I just, I just kept going, kept going. The last time I spoke to you at a Cage Warriors show, it was a show in Newcastle. You fought a man by the name of Lou Long. Since then, you've gone five and one. Lou Long was scheduled to face Che Mills in Wales. That fight didn't happen. Uh, Lou is now fighting Kez Mamba, but potentially now, you know, since that loss, five and one, you've gone in your career. Is it time for a rematch with Lou Long? Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, I, I said. There's two things I want right now. I, I even want a slot on USC London card. Um, feeling that, I want to fight for the belt at the Echo. Whoever Cage Warriors thinks the right opponent for me, that could be, be Lou. Um, you know, there's a number of rematches. Mawson's on a good run. Um, they could bring someone fresh in. There's talk with John Maguire. Uh, the, imp the opponent doesn't matter. I want, I want a shot at that belt. I want to show what I can do on that stage. So, um, whoever it is. Motion Bahari, right? That's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. The, the man that is literally stood a, a few seat, uh, yeah, feet I mean, away. I, I feel like like Motion did well. He got a good win against um, Ali Arish. Um, our fight, our original fight, was not much in it. I know he'll he'll want to show more from that. So so that's a possibility. But listen, I'm I'm not the matchmaker. I'm not calling anyone out. Respect to everyone, but I I, I want that fight for that belt. And whoever they put in there with me, I, I'll be ready. Mr. Inman, one last thing I want to ask you. Obviously, there's a lot of hype at the minute. Uh, Next Generation Liverpool with Paddy Pimblett, Chris Fishgold. But it seems like the same case is with SPG Manchester as well, led by the man, the mastermind, Carl Tanswell. You've got yourself, you've got Saul Rogers, you've got um, Martin Stapleton, who's you know looking to go make himself uh, a double world champion as well. Lots of big things ahead for you guys at the minute. Yeah, it's a huge time. Um... We've got big stuff happening right across the team from, from amateur level. We've got some of the best amateurs in the country, I feel, coming up who are going to make big noise. And then we've got you know, guys like Saul, in my opinion, the, the best featherweight, lightweight um, outside of the UFC. Stapes, he's right up there in that position as well. Um, you know, Just so many good guys. And I'm fortunate that I get to work with these guys in day in, day out. And hopefully you can add that title to the, the trophy cabinet at SBG as well next year. Yeah, yeah. Matt. Hopefully, put that in there. <laughs> Hopefully, Matt, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Great win tonight. Cheers, man. Thanks. Thanks.